you can marry someone's wife even before she gets married. Why? Because failure to discern the owner of the door that is open can lead people into marriages that were not theirs. You incur costs that are not even necessary. Marrying somebody who is not even compatible with your spirit, even with your body. You married her because to you she was a description and a definition of an open door. You married her because she was there, present. Not every open door is your door. No matter how great and effectual. I wish there was a way that this information would penetrate you at this point. He said, what about the door? I will tarry. Uh -huh. But I will tarry uh -huh. at Ephesus uh -huh. until Pentecost. I'm here until Pentecost, which means already he has descended. For how long the door is going to remain open? He can see the presence of the door, right? And that the door is open and for how long? That this opportunity shall close. After Pentecost, this same door that is open now, which means if I'm going to do something, I have to do it now, whilst I'm still young. This opportunity you have is going to close. Descend when the door is going to close and you make a decision now for a great door mm -hmm. and effectual mm -hmm. is opened unto me. Opened unto who? Me. Uh -huh. And there are many adversaries. Ah, come on. How do you bring those two things together in one verse? He wants some of you here to understand that the presence of adversaries is not proof that the door is not yours. <laughs> ha! Because if I tell some of you to go and descend the door, this is how far you are going to descend the door. You look at the door and look at how many people are fighting you. If there is no fight, you think, so this is my door. That's how far some of you can descend. Paul is saying the door is so great and then it's very effectual. But there are many adversaries. Many enemies. In the midst of the enemies, he still can descend the presence of the door and the greatness of the door and you still declare that the door that is open here is for me where he was resisted the most he said i can feel the presence of an open door i told you before i taught you on how jacob got the blessing that wasn't his, though he had his own part in the blessing. Esau lost the blessing that was his, the door was his. And he failed to walk in through the door. And Jacob came and he took the blessing that was meant for Esau. So now he has walked through a door which is owned by his brother and he goes to Laban and he worked for seven years <laughs> for Rachel. After seven years, 
the father came and presented a different door before him and said, no, 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 you have to go through this door first called Leah. And he began to wonder, how can you cheat me like that? No, he's, he's not cheating you. You took somebody's blessing. This Leah was meant for Esau. Okay? Yes. If it was Esau here, you should have brought your brother to marry this first one. And then, then you get the last one. But you took his anointing upon you and his responsibilities upon you and his grace upon you. You use somebody else's door. You partake of his miseries. I have to continue on this topic, but hear me, child of God, hear me. You must be sure. But number one, there is a door. Be sure of that. I'm telling you already there is a door. Number two, discern whether the door is open or the door is shut. Already I'm telling you the door is open. Discern for how long the door is going to remain open. Discern whose door it is. Whose door? Whose door? Hear me. Israel is in Egypt and God wants to take them out of Egypt. To where? To where? To where? Ah, are there no people in Canaan? Huh? The place called Canaan is for them. But the people that do not own the place are in the place. They are controlling the place. Dominating the place. Waiting for the owners of the place to realize that the door that is open is for them. But hear this now. That journey from Egypt to the promised land. At one point, here, they have the door before them. By the name of the Red Sea. <sighs> what do we do here? And they began to cry and Moses went to God and God said to Moses, Go, stretch forth your hand and open the door. Open the door. And then, in a miraculous way, he then opened the door. And the door, hear me now, the door that then God opened for them was for them. It was the door meant for the children of Israel only. And then the children of Israel walked into the door, through the door, into the promised land, because the door that God had opened was theirs. Mm -hmm. Then here comes the Egyptians. They still found the door open. And they said, the grace of God is upon us. Everywhere we go, we find open doors. I will use it because it is open. And an Egyptian walked through the door that was not meant for him. Why did God, why did he keep the gate open? Knowing that every Jew Every Hebrew had already passed. He knew that fools were coming. They will make use of every opportunity because it's an opportunity. Failure to discern the owner of the open door. Yeah. 
Paul tells us that I can do all. How many things? But not all things are profitable. I can do. I have the ability. I can do anything. I can do anything. But did he do everything? No. He chose one thing. Who do you want to become? Before you lies an open door. And that door God is saying, no man can shut it. So why is it that I cannot use the door? I thought people were the ones stopping me from entering through the door. No, they're not the people. It's not the people. The devil is busy blinding you. 